This should be funny. Are you ready? <laughs> I did not know he had a gaming channel. <laughs> Let's get this. You know, one of the best things about video games is that they allow us to transcend the petty limitations of the real world, creating fantastical sure. landscapes that defy logic, terrifying monsters, awe-inspiring wonders, and iconic characters bound only by the limitations of the human imagination. It truly is the very purest form of creativity. Unless, of course, you happen to be a Western game developer, in which case your escapist fantasy entertainment absolutely has to reflect the world we live in today. 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 You probably noticed that there's been a bit of a shift in the portrayal of video game characters in recent years, particularly the female. You know? Reflect the world we live in today. You know, there's beautiful, even average looking people on this planet, right? And you want... <laughs> oh, God, fantasy. That's exactly what it is. Things are fantastical and larger than life. You know? And they just want to give us this... I mean, that character there is hard to look at. Look at what they did to that woman. And she's a cute chick in real life. Like, come on now. <laughs> no ones. A process that probably has a far more technical name, but which a super man mm -hmm. like myself can best describe as... Oddlification. Uh -huh. It's like gaming is somehow de evolving it. even as technology and production costs rise to astronomical levels. For Meanwhile, this got awards, right? Which I'm sure were paid for. And you got her getting hit from the back at a love scene, if you can call it that. <laughs> a scene of outright dirty passion. Oh, I, I saw it once. Oh, God. It's still, it's still singed, burned into my brain. But that was okay to show, right? But Stellar Blade is bad. Right. I hope it breaks all type of records, too, when it comes out. It's already getting pre-ordered out the wazoo. Producing characters that look less human and more physically repulsive with each new release. A ruined and terrible form of life. I mean, Jesus, look at the state of it. I don't think... <laughs> Check this out. If I were ever mo for anything... There would be a stipulation in my contract, a clause, if you will, or whatever that it needs to be termed, is I have to look as good or better than myself in this game. Do you understand? I must sign off on approval also. Yes. I'm... <laughs> Alright. Look at this AI picture of me. That is me, anywhere from my 20s to 30s, with about 10 to 15 more pounds of muscle on, okay? That's what that is. That's a good looking dude right there. He's better looking at me than I am right now. But in my 20s through 30s, I was that, but 10 to 15 pounds smaller in muscle, okay? I'm shooting to get back to that. I'm in the 220s right now. That's probably me at 215, 7, 6% body fat, something like that. If I was scanned, that's what I need to look like or better. Do you understand? Okay. <laughs> Anyone wants to go on an adventure with this girl? No. A quick glance at your average AAA development page is like taking a walk down your average high street in Scotland. The faces you see vaguely correspond to your understanding of what human beings look like, but the features, proportions, and arrangements are so far off that you're left with a disturbingly intense urge to get out of there as quickly as possible and never look back. And it's interesting to note that this phenomenon seems to be confined to one half of the population only. Women. And one thing I noticed this, I noticed this around the time that 
most of the woke garbage started to kind of get pushed, you know, kind of with the body acceptance stuff. And like a, a while back, but before it truly, really hit all the franchises I was really involved with, I started to notice now if you go walk around certain stores, you know, I don't know whether it be your Walmart, your Target, whatever. I've just noticed in different stores that they don't use the most attractive people in advertisements anymore. Not that that's exactly a bad thing. Because, I mean, like, but I was in sales forever. And one thing we were taught is good-looking salespeople are always hired because good-looking people sell more product. That's why you see the most, the best looking people model and do this and that. And do you know there's two types of models? There's high fashion models and there's um, character models. There are character models out there that make way more money than certain high fashion models. You know why? Because they get a whole lot more work. The character model is the guy sipping Pepsi, putting on the Nike. You got what I'm saying? Eating the Subway sandwich on the poster. High fashion, though, it's very small area of what fashion does, of what advertising does. You may get your Naomi Campbells and Tyson Beckfords out of there. You know, you're really good looking people. There may be also a lot of, they're kind of strange looking, but they're attractive at the same time type of look. All of that's high fashion. But the guy that is sipping on Pepsi and, you know, you know, whatever it is, holding the blow pop in his hand, though a lot of they them make a whole lot of money. And they tend, the character models tend to look more like someone you know. While Tyson, Naomi Campbell, all them, they tend to kind of look like people you only see once in a while. So it's not exactly a bad thing. Um, but I've noticed that with the whole body body positivity thing. That that was ushered in. And also now you have models that have disabilities. You see them with uh, the salmon wheelchairs. You see them with, with vitiligo all over the place. Um, or extreme freckles on their face. I've seen that. Now I have vitiligo. I actually have vitiligo. Um, I believe that I have destroyed it and got rid of it. Um, but vitiligo, um, from what my studies, it was it's caused by... Um, um, viral. It's a viral infection that can cause it. And I have a couple of w white spots on my body, different places. That's about it. I don't even think Scarlo has noticed. And she's seen me completely naked. Yeah, let's watch this. Almost like it's intentional or something. The problem seems to have been bubbling away for a while now, but like mm -hmm. an explosive diet, hey, it could only be held back for so long before it Don't made its an entry into the world, destroying a pair of your best Calvin Klein's the girl right process. There. And the explosive release finally came with the advent of the sweet baby debacle, which has shed light on a lot of things that Western game developers probably would have rather kept secret. <laughs> but there it is, all the same. And now that it's out there, it's fair game for people like me to comment on. So just like on my main channel, where I talk about the problems blighting modern Hollywood movies, I figured I'd make a video series here about why modern gaming sucks. And truly, mm -hmm. we're better to start with any good book than the cover. Part one, everyone's <laughs> fucking ugly. Yeah. Now, rather than just point and laugh at how ugly characters have become in recent years, let's see if we can break this one down scientifically. And that being the case, the first major problem seems to be a general rejection of femininity and female beauty in modern game development. A perfect example of this is the character model for MJ in the two Spider-Man games. It's the same character in the same game series made by the same dev studio, but with a radically different appearance in each one. In the first game, you can quite clearly see the facial model has all the traits commonly associated with traditional femininity. Yeah, Rounded no. facial structure, full lips, large eyes, and a small nose. Now compare it to MJ in the second game, and well, I think you can spot the differences. This version has a large, prominent chin, a wider and stronger so jaw, thinner chin. lips, heavier yeah. eyebrows, and eyes that are proportionally smaller because the rest of her <laughs> face is now bigger. In short, she's got a far more masculine appearance mm -hmm. than before. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Or how about Aloy from the Horizon mm -hmm. games? Mm -hmm. And what did I tell you? 
that uh, I heard in that interview, that guy that called in, he, former programmer for a big company, he said, they're all doing it to appease the trans community because they don't want to offend them. And when's the last time you even heard the trans community saying, uglify these characters or make them look more masculine so that we feel comfortable? I haven't even heard them say that. Series that I actually quite enjoy. You can see in the image on the left how she looked in the original mm -hmm. game. Not hyper feminine by any stretch because no. she's trying to survive in a primitive yeah. post apocalyptic world where cosmetics aren't exactly easy to come by, but still she's recognizably female with the softer facial yep. structure typically associated with women. The image on the right, on the other hand, is so masculine that if you were to give her some facial hair, you'd basically be left with a man yep. and a handsome man. <laughs> Same deal with the main character from Star Wars Outlaws. Prominent chin that would make even Sergeant Slaughter jealous. A wide, strong jawline, thin lips and small eyes. Slime. Jesus, it's like these characters all rolled off the same bland assembly line. It's even more perplexing when you see what her actress looks like. I could go on and on with this stuff all day, but you get the basic idea. Uh -huh. The real question, though, is why? Yeah. Why are Western developers so against the idea yeah. of femininity and female beauty in games? Are you trying to get rid of the male gaze? But that wouldn't make sense because the men are still attractive in games. The men are still buff, in shape, square jaws, hunter eyes, all that stuff. You know what I mean? So why well, don't understand what's... Why can't the women be attractive as the men now or more? Which actually sells more video games because mainly guys are gamers. I mean, if I was a cynical man, I might suggest that most game studios are infested with jealous, physically repulsive land whales who can't stand to be reminded that they've broken more mirrors than Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, do you know that I've never seen Conan the Barbarian? I know! Calm down! Calm down! I've seen parts of it as a kid, parts of Red Sonja as a kid. Um, I think they were rated R, weren't they? And, you know, as a kid, I wasn't allowed to see rated R movies. So I had to kind of sneak to see stuff. So one of these days, I'm going to have to watch all the Conan movies and Red Sonja. Yow, 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 yow. Let's go a little bit deeper than that. It's definitely not a technology problem, that's for sure. Games have been capable of rendering accurate facial scans yes, to real have. actors for decades mm -hmm. at this point. I mean, look at Julia Voth from the Resident Evil oh, remake. Wow. That game's more than 20 years oh. old now, and the resemblance is uncanny. Okay. Or Ellen Page in Beyond Two Souls, which came out in mm. 2013. Okay. Or Hayden Panettiere from mm. Until Dawn from 2015. That's how or you Keanu say Reeves Panettiere. from Cyberpunk. Okay. And as for today, well, all you need to do is take a look at games like Final Fantasy Rebirth or Stellar Blade to see that we're more than capable of... Re I had a thing for Hayden when she was in Heroes. <laughs> Claire... Rendering beautiful characters on screen. No, the issue here is a creative one. But mm -hmm. why exactly? Well, there seems to be this weird assumption that gamers can't or won't take a female character seriously if they find them physically attractive, so the only solution Bull. is to reduce or remove Bull any element of attractiveness and sensuality, producing bland, ugly, unappealing models that nobody wants to look at. For me... People have been in love with Chun Li and Lara Croft forever. What do you mean we wouldn't take them seriously? If someone actually said that, come on now, that's a lie. This is a deeply flawed premise on two levels. One, because characters like Lara Croft, Ada Wong, Jill Valentine, Tifa Lockhart, and Aerith Gainsborough are all conventionally right. beautiful, but they've all stood the test of time that's as well right. because they were more than just their physical appearance. They were all genuinely interesting characters that people liked and identified mm -hmm. with. Their beauty didn't undermine that, it enhanced it. The second reason is, well, down to simple human nature. We as yeah. people generally prefer to look at physically attractive That's individuals. Right. We instinctively seek out beauty, we're drawn to it, and we enjoy being around it. Why do you think so many Hollywood actors or models or pop stars are conventionally good looking? Yep. It's the same reason we don't go to art galleries to look at children's finger paintings. <laughs> we want to experience something higher and better. Something Although some of the paintings do look like children's finger paintings. <laughs> 
aspirational. I know that's a tough pill to swallow, but there it is. The truth of the matter is that nobody enjoys looking at ugly people. Nope. Yeah, we know that most of us don't look like Chris Hemsworth or Sidney Sweeney, and that's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. We know we'll never have a body like Chris Redfield or Lara <laughs> Croft, and that's okay too. Why? Because we're not narcissistic idiots who need to see ourselves reflected in everything that we see and do, yeah. or have all our hang-ups and insecurities validated by pulling everyone down to our level. Yeah. Believe it or not, human beings are a lot more mature and resilient than that. I don't need to sit there in a video game and say, hey, that's so, that's real, that would happen in my life. We're looking for fantastical stuff, just like in movies. As a matter of fact, one thing you hear less when you're playing a video game from people is, Ah, oh, that would never happen! But people will say stuff like that watching a movie, like, Yeah, right, ain't no way he, no way he jumped from there to that! Because, you know what I mean? But in a video game, of course! Of course! So, same things with the looks. The other thing that strikes me is that a lot of the shitty modern tropes from Hollywood are starting to spill over into the video game industry, mm -hmm. particularly when it comes to blurring the lines between men and women, male characters in movies. Yeah, you know what? I've been meaning to say this in a bunch of videos that I've been doing. When I was going down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories years ago, years ago, like in my 20s, they were saying... That in the future, they will try to start blurring the lines between men and women. And you're going to start to see a lot of androgynous stuff. Or I was just like, you know, I remember hearing that. But it didn't dawn on me until a few weeks ago. And I was just, you know, sometimes you just, you know, walking around your house and you're like, you just remember something that you I'm like. They said that this would happen all those years ago. Also, the conspiracy theorists said that we would eventually run into aliens and there would be a, f a false flag alien attack. I remember hearing that. Guess we'll have to see. Movies and TV shows today are often depicted as neurotic, insecure, emotionally fragile, cowardly, verbose, and self-deprecating, generally lacking in agency or the ability to assert themselves in any <coughs> situation. It's okay, Women, Eve. on the other hand, are now written to be stoic, confident, assertive, yeah, arrogant, girl, you and can aggressive, go. which are the same exact traits that were once considered toxic in men. They're basically trying to turn them into men, or at least a warped parody of what they think masculine behavior is. Yeah, why to make the women tough, you make them act like us. You can make a woman be tough without acting like a man. You don't have to have her act like us. You can act, have her act like a tough woman. I know what a tough woman is. I grew up around several of them growing up. They were feminine. They were women. They were tough, but you didn't mistake them for trying to act like us. Here's one thing I hear women do and argue about and say in certain videos, and you'll find this. They'll say, um, like a woman in a relationship, if the man's not stepping up, she'll start to behave more masculine and do this and do that. And, and no, 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 no. I don't want to hear that excuse for you behaving like a man. Because when men are dealing with a woman who is not stepping up, do we all of a sudden become more feminine or feminine and doing all the female things so that we can pick up your slack? No. You acted like that because you wanted to act like that. You think that if you in a lopsided relationship that being, a, being more like a man will pick up the slack? No. Just handle your job as an adult woman and you'll be fine. Or leave him and find a good man. How about that? And I think that mentality is bleeding into gaming now as well. Female characters are being redesigned to look more and more like men because mm -hmm. game studios incorrectly associate masculinity with strength and femininity with weakness yep. rather than seeing both as just being different paths to the same yep. situation. They desperately want to create tough, independent, empowered women because let's face it, that's pretty much the only kind of characters they're allowed to write now. And because they lack the skill and imagination to construct interesting characters with actual feminine characters, 
characteristics. Their only solution is to churn out women who look, talk, and act like the toxic men they despise so much. Mm -hmm. It's actually kind of funny when you think about yeah. it. Their own flawed worldview created a problem that they can only solve by replicating the same exact problem that they created in the first yeah. place. <laughs> 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 fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> Who's any of this supposed to appeal to? Men certainly don't like it because seeing their favourite characters turned into the Giga Chad meme to score social media points and court an audience that doesn't exist is irritating and depressing. Women don't seem to care much for it either because I'm willing to bet that not many of them aspire to look like this. Nope. Or this. Nope. Or this. Nope. Female gamers aren't going to feel sad and excluded mm. just because they've seen Ada Wong killing monsters while executing a perfect backflip in a ball gown. Instead, they're going to see a cool, awesome, beautiful yep. woman kicking ass and doing awesome things. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's the whole point of playing video games, in fact. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to reflect the real world with all its tedious, mundane problems and restrict. Yeah, you know what? By the way, too. It's like they, they, they want to somehow even things out or whatever. I don't know. Look, an overweight, middle-aged Italian plumber has been the number one video game mascot forever. That should tell you something. Just make a good story around these characters. Make them great characters. It really doesn't matter what you make them. As long as fans don't smell agenda, you'll have a hit on your hand. As long as the game, the story is right, the game is mechanically sound and fun, you'll have a hit. But all we keep smelling is agenda. Is that fragrance you're wearing? Is that agenda? Lovely scent. Fuck out of here, man. Restrictions. They're supposed to represent something higher, something better, something more fun. They're supposed to represent what we aspire to be, not what we're stuck with in our day-to-day -day lives. And the more you try to fuck with that, the more you lose sight of the very purpose of your industry. And well, the more your customers are going to abandon you in favour of something better. Why do you think the Stellar Blade demo made such an impact? It's because the developers were smart enough to give their customers exactly what they want. Yep. A kick-ass beautiful woman in a skin-tight bodysuit. And in turn, gamers saw it as a giant fuck you to all the prissy, yeah. sanctimonious, fun-killing developers that are slowly strangling Western gaming. And you're, that's one of the main reasons why you're going to see people get into it that probably would have never have gotten into this because they want to give you the finger. And they're giving it to you real well, deep inside. And if there's one thing that gamers love doing most of all, it's saying fuck you to people who try to control and lecture them. Yep. And for now at least, Eastern developers still seem to understand that fact. That's the great thing about the free market, you see. The customers can <laughs> always see. go elsewhere, and if you don't change course pretty soon, you might just find that out to your cost. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. <laughs> Good job, drinker. Get over there and subscribe. Tell them Tyrone Magnus sent you. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share.